I will, I will. I'm really amazed how many people are interested in putting together connectivity and automation. And I also believe that this will be the next big innovation and revolution in our time. I would like to take something to show. Let me have a look if I manage that. I would like to bring you a little bit back, connecting the dots and speak about how we put everything together in order to understand where we are going. My name is Alan Gerardi, and we at UBS are working on a more agile hosting and development platforms for our developers, for our operations people, and for our business customers. Today's view of financial industry towards open source software has changed. But let us take some time look backwards and connect the dots. In 2005, Steve Jobs gave his famous commencement speech at Stanford University. He told the story of how, we came, how he came to connect the dots of his past and went on to revolutionize technology. Today, in 2016, I strongly believe that we have the right components together, starting from CI, CD, continuous delivery, virtual machines, container technologies, microservices, DevOps, et cetera, et cetera, to finally fulfill the promise of an agile, lean IT development. That's the reason why I would like to look back with you and to start with the four industrial revolutions. We have characterized the prior three industrial revolution using the timeline proposed by Nicholas Davis, the World Economic Forum's head of society and innovation. That was the guy which brought up all this robotic at the last year's WEF. And our central view is that all industry revolution involve at once in two fields, automation and connectivity. And if you listened to what Thomas was saying, he just mentioned automation, robotics, and connectivity with the past, or something else. The first industrial revolution ushered in early automation by machinery in lieu of agricultural inputs. 1784 saw so Henry Kurtz's invention in England of the puddling process that turned pick iron into road iron. Pick iron is raw eisen, and the other one is schmiede eisen. This was seen as a key inflection point of the first industrial revolution, marking the beginnings of automation. Mechanization became a key element of economic development, leading to a profound split between the East and West that has only recently started to convert. Remember the slides of uh, Thomas by having a look how many patents have been issued in China? It's reality. Manufacturing process and the nation use of higher energy intensive fuels, such as coal and petrol followed, paving the way for steam power and locomotives. This in turn spurred both a connectivity revolution via wider travel and the search in the construction of infrastructure projects, including bridges, tunnels, adequates, and ports. The second industrial uh, revolution around 1817 was characterized by three factors. Higher level of automation via the development of mass production, more efficient connectivity in production by the division of labor, and further progress in the use of energy sources such as electricity and petroleum. Standardization was one of the key drivers of these achievements, including of quality standards, for example, within trade blocks, and transport systems, for example, the shipping container. The rise of the digital age characterized the third industrial revolution. In 1969, 
was the year in which connectivity took a leap forward with the first message sent over the ARPANET, the forebear of today's internet. Equally, the scope for automation was vastly enhanced by the implementation of Moore's law. The observation that the number of transition on an integrated circuit has doubled approximately every two years. Moore's law generally refers directly to electronic circuit, the, the foundation of technology of this era. It captured the wider phenomenon of output growing as an exponential function of input. Moore's law resulted in greater computing power and the ability to automate even more complex tasks. In some areas, such as biotechnology, the pace of progress has been exceeded more slow. The fourth industrial revolution is being driven by extreme automation and extreme connectivity. We expect artificial intelligence to be a pervasive future feature of the future of the fourth industrial revolution. Extreme connectivity enables more universal, global, and close to instant communication. It is giving rise to new business model and it's opening up economic supply in ways previously not possible. Indeed, the creation of Uber, the taxi smartphone app, was only made possible by the explosive increase in portable internet-enabled device. Extreme automation can also be coupled with extreme connectivity, allowing computer systems to control and manage physical process and respond in ever more human ways. And I believe that what you guys want to do, I believe that the human aspect within your robotics also has uh, some importance, at least I would guess. Here is an attempt at summarizing some themes and trends we focus on. First, as already mentioned, Artificial intelligence looks more and more likely to become part of the brain of the banks. Secondly, the rise of clouds allowed API-enabled marketplaces to develop and thrive, but also increased the need for smart security solutions, as uh, this young gentleman over was uh, also pointing out with the robotics and the connectivity. As you will know, there are already a number of marketplaces offering alternative investments and the other asset classes, which we as a bank also need to explore. And super advanced privacy solutions are developed, which we should be looking at to stay cutting edge in protecting client data and own networks. Thirdly, as Gartner puts it, the device mesh is growing larger and more connected by the day with the growing number of internet connections, connected devices. This is regardless of age, as even the older generation has embraced the larger screens. So close to full coverage is a life reality. But it's not just smartphone, tablets, and laptops. New connected devices will become part of everyday life soon. And many carved the payment process out as financial uh, touch points. Last but not least, many people are uh, already convinced that blockchain, despite being nation technology, has massive disintermediation potential for the financial industry. But it's getting more extreme with the onset of the fourth industrial revolution. Witness BlackBerry versus the evolved version of Apple. In 2007, seven firms controlled 99% of handset profits. Nokia, Samsung, Sony, Motorola, LG, RIM, and HTC. In six years, all but one were making losses, while one newcomer had 92% of all industry profits. That was Apple. Three of four, three of 
five largest listed companies globally by market cap are platform companies. Apple, Google, Microsoft. 13 of the top 32 are as well. Previous industrial revolution have been about supply side economies of scale. Huge amount of capital investment to create a product, small margin cost of production, and great scalability. But the fourth industrial revolution is different. Instead, today, you need to change your customer and not to convince him about your product. You have a platform and you have user who create the content. You need, therefore, to change the customer users to improve the quality, usefulness of what they are providing to you. Obviously, open source is one way to do that. For example, Airbnb has people offering rooms, apartments, and people renting them. But the service becomes better if the rooms being let are cleaner, of higher quality, and the hosting is great. While, at the same time, the people renting behaves better. So what they did, they introduced a mutual rating system which forces good behavior. Again, rating is important. You always will get feedback, immediate feedback. So what is the developer doing today? We need to make a step change in development efficiency while improving quality and run cost. We need to sustainably improve agility, stability, and efficiency of our platform. Software. Software is changing industry, that's true. But software itself is changing. You hear a lot about the buzzwords and new technology coming to play with ideas such as microservices, DevOps, continuous delivery, containerization of workloads made popular by Docker. Everybody's saying that. What we need to do is to catch up with the market on contemporary application technology, having the enterprise grade level on focus. Better efficiency in application development by automating and standardizing the software development lifecycle. Better time to market in application development by providing easy to consume, highly dynamic and automated development and test environments. Better functionality of development resources by standardizing platforms and application design so that developers can more easily move between projects. Better quality solution easier to life cycle by using higher level infrastructure abstraction. Last but not least, focusing development work to what matters to UBS by using higher level infrastructure services. Application development works on business problems and not on technology problems. We developed our maturity model starting as you guys did with focus to eliminate the end of life issue with hardware, very focused on virtual machines. Our next focus area is on hosting application, abstraction of applications in containers and so forth. What we learned in the financial industry, and I think maybe you should take also a little bit of this uh, learning, Never ever publish some dates because you will be late. Maybe. So what are we speaking about? Better architectural agility by basing everything on a strong standard-based integration architecture. Improved business cases for underlying infrastructure optimization by having large numbers of applications sitting on the same infrastructure abstraction layer. Improve runtime efficiency by ability to use automated environments for development and operations. Improved support for innovative models in the development process, DevOps, global teams. 
align everything across the whole group, I mean the UBS group, as divisional difference in this field don't generate value. So as a recap, all industry revolution involves advances in two fields. Which are they? Automation and connectivity. The rise of clouds allowed API-enabled marketplaces to develop and thrive, but also increased the need for smarter security solution, connectivity. Three of the five largest listed companies globally by market cap are platform company, Apple, Google, Microsoft. Focusing development work to what matters to UBS by using higher level infrastructure services. Application development works on business problems, not tech problem. And it is about fast, reliable, continuous development with zero downtime and the ability to roll back. It's about scaling to any number of server VMs container, including design of self-healing system capable of dealing with both hardware and software failures, centralized logging and monitoring for the applications. In order that we are getting into a discussion, I would like to start with some icebreaker questions to you guys. Could you raise your hand if you are working on a path environment in your business life? Absolutely. Thank you. Are you using public, private, or uh, hybrid pass? So who is using a public pass? Oh, quite a lot. Who is using private pass? Same amount. And hybrid? A little bit less. So you guys are using all the three, I see. Do you use open source platform as a service? Not everybody? Okay. Who is using Cloud Foundry as the foundation? So thanks a lot. Questions to me? Yes, please. So that's really something about uh, uh, questions to uh, financial industry, um, IT department. Uh, we are coming from an environment where we used EGB as our main framework to develop. We are now changing and we are now going to more uh, Tomcat server based uh, paradigm in our development. Or Node.js uh, where we have a couple of applications uh, running on Node.js. So I would say 99% is still, or let's say 95% is still uh, not cloud ready. We have maybe 4% of our applications which are cloud ready, so you can run it on a, on a, on a path. And we have maybe 1% which are cloud natives. But that's the start. It's like Thomas was saying, we are really having a look and defining our platform strategy and moving more and more platforms into a pass lightweighted environment because we believe in the advantages we get out of this technology. Yes? Yeah, so the usual problem, you have a new platform and nobody's using it. That's a big problem. And then in financial industry, people are coming to you and saying, you have to pay me that I go to your new platform. And we would like to change that. So first of all, we are really working on a contract that uh, an application 
which uh, will survive need also to take into consideration life cycle aspect. So a little part uh, of the funding needs to be reserved for uh, replatforming or moving to the other one. The time is now really mature in order that we are able to force our business also to move out of legacy um, platforms because of end of life, of hardware end of life, of uh, software component, and we put audit items on that to motivate our business to move out of this application and into the new one. And the last one is the architects together with uh, the service uh, and product manager need to communicate and present roadmaps and we in infrastructure need to provide these platforms where the people can uh, migrate to. Last orders, she, she will give me anyway the, the yellow and the red card. Other questions? Everything you wanted to know about financial industry? Never dare to ask, yes? Blockchain. <laughs> How much? How to protect in a, in a security way or in a controlled, uncontrolled? So what we have in our deployment process, uh, we have a package verification uh, step where we scan the software uh, and we try to find out if there is a uh, account number or if there is something like name. So that's what we do in every deployment. It's embedded in the, into our CI CD. It's a cry. How do you protect against Trojan horses is also something we do. Nothing else? Then I would like to give okay. Stephanie. Okay, thank you very much, Alan, for your presentation.